Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be talking about the second messengers. So in any signaling scheme that you have came across, so the basic signaling scheme would be the signal reception by a receptor and conveying that signal into the downstream headquarters, which is the nucleus. And in the middle of that, there are several middlemans. These middlemans are actually second messenger. One key aspect of these second messengers is that they kind of amplify the signal. So we would take the example of our well-known G protein couple signaling. Let's say here the red ligand has bind to the GPCR and as a result it allows activation of several G alpha subunits and several G alpha subunit can in turn go and activate several adenylate cyclase enzymes. Once many adenylate cyclase enzymes are activated, several rounds of cyclic AMP production would be there. When several rounds of cyclic AMP production is there, several protein kinase A molecules could be activated and its catalytic subunit can in turn go to the nucleus and at several level the signal could get amplified. So the signal amplification is a very important aspect when it comes to the second messengers. And due to the second messenger, signal is amplified many of the cases. Moreover, the second messengers give us more flexibility in the uh, signaling system. Or in other terms, it gives more regulability. So the si second messengers kind of work like a transistor to take the, uh, work like an amplifier to take the signal from the outside and kind of amplify that and send it to the nucleus. So this is how second messengers are so important. So in this video, we will be talking about several popular second messengers and how they are involved in cell signaling pathways. So first, let's talk about calcium as a second messenger. Now, calcium is always important for physiological purposes. And it was discovered by Sidney Ringer. And in 1880s, Sidney Ringer was trying to generate composition of several artificial buffer which can make a isolated heart beating. But all his experiments were failed. Until one day when he suddenly used tap water to make the buffer instead of distilled water. And he saw magically the heart started beating. Now he was like surprised. And later it was found that London tap water was uh, heavily contaminated by the salts of calcium. From that time, this solution was known as Ringer solution and people knew that calcium is very important molecules in terms of physiological aspect. You know, calcium is literally important for several different cellular aspects, starting from muscle contraction, secretion, metabolism, fertilization, neuronal plasticity, cell division, phagocytosis, cell motility and many many more. So it turns out the level of calcium inside a neuron can give rise to different plastic outcome. So the plasticity or the flexibility in the neuronal output could be different depending upon the different level of calcium. Calcium dynamics could range from millisecond to seconds to minutes or several times several days and depending upon the level of calcium and the magnitude of the calcium the outcome of the plastic response is totally different. Now in a cellular aspect, calcium, cyclic AMP, DA, cyclic AMP, IP3, DAG, all these are second messenger molecules. So in a GQ signaling format, upon ligand binding, the GQ gets activated and the GQ activates phospholipase C. And the phospholipase C is a phospholipase, so it can break down uh, uh, phospholipids in the membrane. And one such breakdown product of the phospholipid is inositol triphosphate. The inositol triphosphate can then migrate to the uh, ER and on the ER there are several IP3 receptors. Now IP3 receptors bind to IP3 and as a result it allows the uh, stored calcium inside the endoplasmic reticulum to be released in the cytosol. Now once in the cytosol calcium can perform many functions and the calcium in sudden calcium increase in the cytosol is detected by 
several uh, particular sensor molecules which are basically cal uh, uh, calmodulin calmodulin has four calcium binding domains which can sense the sudden increase in the level of calcium and calmodulin can interact with several different modulators to give different outcomes in one of the cases calmodulin can activate several phosphatases so phosph these phosphatases can allow a nuclear transcription factor to be mobilized to the nucleus and give rise to transcription so the calcium increase has could could have different different outcome depending upon the context and which cell it is so that is how calcium is very important uh, second messenger cyclic amp is one of the earliest discovered second messenger among all those system but what cyclic amp does is like whenever a signal is recepted the signal is uh, amplified and uh, goes to the nucleus so the cyclic amp is different from a uh, normal atp now atp cannot be used as a second messenger right because the cell would be too much confused about the atp because several metabolic processes also create atp so if cell use atp as a second messenger system so it would be very hard for the cell to decode the message now cyclic amp is a cyclic variant of atp that is why it is unique and can be worked uh, can be used as a second messenger system also it has been seen that neuronal activity can lead to increase in cyclic amp and this is correlated with memory storage in fact eric kendall has shown that conversion of the short term memory to long term memory uh, is involved long term memory involves cyclic amp elevation and uh, mobilization of the protein kinase a into the nucleus and thereby gene transcription programs now it has been also seen the mutants where cyclic amp production is hampered the fly mutants their learning index decreased dramatically so somehow cyclic amp is in, important in all these learning and memory all these physiological processes now how did scientists figure out that cyclic amp works like a second messenger so all the work goes to arl sutherland arl sutherland received his nobel prize in 1971 in physiology and medicine for his discoveries of mechanisms of hormone action so he mainly showed that uh, the action of epinephrine now around 16 1960s he showed that how cyclic adenosine monophosphate or cyclic amp serves as a secondary messenger within the cell so he started his work in the lab of carl and gertie cory i mean the famous couple who discovered the cory cycle and he was looking at the role of epinephrine on glycogen breakdown into glucose molecule so what the experiment he was doing is uh, taking out the rat liver so the the rat liver uh, was smashed uh, homogenized and two fraction was determined a cytoplasmic fraction which would have glycogen phosphorylase the terminal uh, enzyme that degrades glycogen uh, into glucose and the membrane fraction would essentially have the epinephrine receptors so he separated these two fractions by centrifugation now the membrane fraction which should obtain uh, which should contain the uh, epinephrine receptors he added epinephrine to that fraction so now if epinephrine has give rise to any kind of diffusible substrate substrate then a filtrate of this solution might be uh, able to activate the enzyme right now when now he took the filtrate of the activated membrane fraction and added that into the cytoplasmic fraction which has the glycogen phosphorylase now after adding he has seen that the activity of the phosphorylase has increased dramatically than the before that allows him to conclude this amplification of the phosphorylase activity is due to any soluble substances and later it was discovered the soluble substances 
is nothing but cyclic AMP, a cyclic variation of ATP. Now we know that adrenaline in a G protein coupled receptor signaling pathway give rise to cyclic AMP and that cyclic AMP in turn activates protein kinase A. Protein kinase A actually activates phosphorylase kinase and phosphorylase kinase is the key activator which phosphori which actually phosphorylate and activate phosphorylase and this phosphorylase enzyme is the important enzyme in the terminal step of glycogenolysis and that is why now we understand why adding psych adding that uh, epinephrine activated membrane fraction could increase phosphorylase activity and it is because of the cyclic amp which activated protein kinase A. So that is how the mystery of the cyclic AMP was discovered. Apart from cyclic AMP, cyclic version of GMP could also work like a second messenger. It turns out people had a very weird observation. When they directly inject acetylcholine into the muscle, the muscle contraction happens. But whenever they injected the nearby blood vessels, they have seen instead of constriction, there is a dilation of the muscle. And in quest of understanding this pheno weird phenomena, they found out that in the blood vessel there are acetylcholine receptors, which are basically G protein coupled receptors. And whenever we add acetylcholine to the blood vessels, it ultimately gives rise to uh, phospholipase C activation and calcium elevation into the cytoplasm, which ultimately the calcium increase converts L arginine to citrulline and produce nitric oxide. This nitric oxide in turn acts upon nearby muscles. This nitric oxide can be detected by a detector which is uh, actually uh, ultimately which can convert cyclic GMP formation from the GTP. Now the cyclic GMP which is also very different from GTP can do several tasks. Cyclic GMP can bind to protein kinase G. Now protein kinase G is an important factor. Protein kinase G can prevent the myosin actin cross bridge form formation and thereby it allows a relaxation of muscle. And that is how now it is explained that how uh, cyclic GMP can work like a second messenger and how smooth muscle relaxation upon uh, acetylcholine injection to the nearby blood vessels could be explained. So this is how second messengers are so important in signal transduction pathways. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.